Welcome to Bible Insights with Wayne Conrad. God's Word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Today's topic, the Rainbow Covenant Sign, or maybe we should say, God's Rainbow Promise in the Sky. We were traveling recently in Texas, and suddenly a rainbow was seen in the distance. It arrested our attention, and we rejoiced to see it. It's beautiful. It reminded me that God is a God of sure promises, that there's hope after the storm has passed, or even after a gentle rain. The rainbow, it always reminds me of God, and a God who makes promises, promises that he keeps. The rainbow has often been used in literature, religion, and art to symbolize a bridge between the land of the sky, between the earth and the heavens. The rainbow symbolizes such things as hope and peace, or promise and new beginnings. But you know, the bow in the clouds, that's a rainbow, is first seen in the Bible in Genesis chapter 9. It's after the great worldwide flood that Noah and his family rode out in the ark that God told him to build. He built it for 120 years, and then they went into the ark on God's instruction with two of every kind of living creature on the land, and God shut the door. And after the storm has passed and the land has begun to dry, Noah and his family descend from the ark to the land has now been cleansed. New life is beginning to come because, remember, the bird had come back with a branch in its beak that told him they could leave. It's at this point that the rainbow first appears, and it is a designated sign by God of a covenant that he makes. Here's the story, reading from Genesis chapter 9, beginning at verse 8 through 17. Then God said to Noah and his sons with him, Understand that I'm establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, birds, livestock, and all wildlife of the earth that are with you, all the animals of the earth that came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again will every creature be wiped out by flood waters. There will never again be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant I'm making between me and you and every living creature with you, a covenant for all future generations. I have placed my bow in the clouds, that is, my rainbow, and it will be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I form clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all the living creatures. Water will never again become a flood to destroy every creature. The bow will be in the clouds, and I will look at it and remember the permanent covenant between God and all the living creatures on earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I've established between me and every creature on the earth. Now, this is a very important passage of Scripture. For one thing, it connects the Genesis account of 1, 2, and 3 with what follows after Noah. Because, you see, Adam was created by God and Eve, and they fell, and the earth multiplied. There was a multitude of people on the earth when the floodwaters came. But the earth became so violent and so wicked in that period of time that God decided to wipe it all out, basically just sort of start over again with Noah and with his three sons and their wives and his wife. Eight people were on the ark, and those eight people are the ones that God began again with on the cleansed earth. But God says, I'm making a covenant with you and every living creature with you on the ark and for all generations after you. 
So God is the covenant initiator. God is the one who establishes covenants between himself and people. People do not establish covenants with God. God is always the initiator of the covenants that he's involved in. Secondly, there are parties to every covenant. God and here, the parties are all living creatures on the earth after the flood. So those are the parties. Usually there is a requirement, but this covenant comes with no requirements. It's unconditional. It's simply God's promise. Here's God's promise. I will not destroy the earth with all of its living creatures again by a worldwide flood. Now, he doesn't say the earth won't be destroyed again at the end of the ages, but he will never again destroy the earth with a worldwide flood that wipes out all living creatures. And here is the sign. Covenants often come with signs, especially biblical covenants. And we'll be looking at those, but this is the first covenant sign given in the Bible. And it's the first use of the word covenant in the Bible. So this is highly significant. So Genesis chapter 9, in fact, Genesis 6 through 9, are very important chapters. And Genesis 9 has the first appearance of the word covenant and the first covenant sign that God gives. The significance of the sign is told. It says, it will bring remembrance of this covenant that God has made before God. God says, I will see the rainbow and I will remember. But the covenant has a dual sign function. So the sign functions both Godward and manward. God says, I will see the covenant. I will see the rainbow. In fact, he says he will form it. And he will remember his promise. Man sees the rainbow and he derives from it comfort, assurance, and peace. Now, the rainbow has a relationship to creation, to the fall, and the first promise of the gospel that we find in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. So after the flood, when God gives the rainbow sign, this is a basically a renewal of the Genesis mandate but with expansion. In other words, before the flood, God is in a relationship with mankind, and mankind has a diet that God has given him, which consisted of all the plants, but not animals. But after the flood, God broadens man's diet to include the eating of animals. Also, in Genesis 9, we find the appearance of murder designated as a, sin, as a sin and with it a punishment, a capital punishment, for the taking of another human life deliberately and on purpose. Now, interestingly, the rainbow also makes an appearance in other books of the Bible. It's later mentioned in the prophets, specifically in Isaiah we find it in Isaiah 54, verse 9. This is like the days of Noah to me, as I swore that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth. So I have sworn that I will not be angry with you and will not rebuke you. He means there forever in his statement concerning the covenant because he's going to be establishing a new covenant. This will be found in fulfillment in the New Testament the writings concerning the new covenant that is brought in by our Lord Jesus Christ. Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 28 says the following, Like the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud on the day of rain, so is the appearance of the brightness all around, such was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord, the glory of Yahweh, the glory of God. And when I saw it, I fell on my face and I heard the voice of one speaking. Ezekiel is describing his encounter with the living God in this vision that he had. Notice God comes and there's a rainbow. This is the, the ray of promise, the ray of hope. 
But interestingly, the rainbow is the last scene in the Bible, in the book of Revelation. And there it's associated again with the throne room of God. Revelation chapter 4, verse 3. And he, this is God, who sat there on the throne, had the appearance of Jasper and Carnelian, and around the throne was a rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald. And lastly, in Revelation chapter 10, verse 1. Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven, wrapped in a cloud with a rainbow over his head, and his face was like the sun and his legs like pillars of fire. The rainbow, what a precious sign God has given us. It's a sure sign that he is a God of promise, a God of hope, and the God who is the sovereign of the universe. Look at the rainbow and let your mind and heart be filled with wonder Let it be filled with hope at the promises of God that are yet to be fulfilled at the appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. This has been Wayne Conrad with Bible Insights. Remember God's promise in the rainbow and take heart. Be filled with hope and peace from the God who sits on the throne.